tonight, I would like to share a story. A story that was once kept inside an unlatched womb of a mother. A story that weaved through an endless helix of failing and succeeding. A story of a voice that was once lost in fear of others. But a story that continues to provide me with a purpose to create my own identity and not identify myself based on others' perceptions of me. This is a story about me. I was born in Montreal, Quebec. At the age of six, I moved to Bangladesh with little French and big dreams. After living 10 years in Bangladesh, I moved here to Vancouver. Now you see, my story does not begin in Montreal or Bangladesh for the matter. It begins right here in Vancouver. In fact, my life itself in Vancouver began with the mere idea of curving out a new story and creating a new beginning out of nothing. Each chapter that unfolds here leaves a lasting impression and each chapter is a new experience to encounter. Now, some chapters bring great euphoria, some bring joyful or sad tears, while others bring tears that manifested from the fear of being in a new place. A flashback to a moment in time. I'm walking fine in the hallways, welcomed with warm gestures, pretty smiles, except this time the smiles were crooked, accompanied with twitching eyes backed up with gossips of how my English is not good enough. The dress I wear is not, perf is not perfectly fitted, and the blazer is too tight. In a situation like this, I began to question myself. Is this what I bring to my community? A face of a maturity of gloom and nothingness? Am I always going to be pushed into a realm of unjust, into a man-made hole that they themselves created for me? And that was the moment that I understood. Some people will perpetually find a, will perpetually find a way to limit my capabilities, whether it's for my appearances, the hijab I wear, or simply because I am a girl from Bangladesh. You see, my transition back to Canada exposed me to many difficulties. It exposed me to labels and assumptions. It exposed me to certain expectations that society desired from me. It exposed me to the perfect blend of judgments and apathy and to uncertainty itself. In fact, at times I even found myself gambling, except this time it wasn't an uncertain gamble with money and luxuries. I was gambling with my own story against my own will, sunbathing in judgments. And when I decided to speak up for myself, they were uninterested. They judged me for my acquisition of the English language and for being a part of the English language learner program. However, in the midst of this all, one of the major difficulties that I had to struggle with was an identity crisis, a phase deeply interlaced with who I was and who I am right now. The crisis was generated from all these boundaries that were created for me and for people who denied me of creating my own story when I came to Vancouver. The story of the endless helix, the story of the voice, and of understanding that the difference in our cultures is not what we should associate with one's identity. Therefore, I choose, and I continue to choose, not to be identified by my headscarf or my cultural norms, rather be identified for who I am and what I actually bring to my community. Because as a figure from an emerging minority group in Vancouver, I'm more than the hijab that I wear, and I'm definitely beyond the limits others set upon me. In fact, in the course of my two years in Vancouver, I've managed to create a body of resilience, persistence, a disciplined mentality, and unwavering courage. Hence, I'm proud of being able to learn from my mistake. The mistake of not understanding sooner that an accent is not to be ashamed of, nor is being an English language learner. The label ELL discouraged me at times because some people around me mocked ELL. However, mere labels nor people prevented my successful strides, nor my humility in asking others for help. In fact, humility was my stepping stone in becoming a committed president and representative of my school's creative writing club, a top English 11 student, the manager of my school's publishing website, and an English and math tutor outside my school community. My hardship assisted me in exceeding others' expectations of my abilities and the boundaries that were created for me. Therefore, I am the limits I set for myself, not what others set upon me. So today, as I leave, I would like to thank TEDx Crofton House, partly for providing me with a free audience to brag to, but mostly for providing me with an open platform to share my story. Because in the end, it is important that a story is shared, not silenced.